Happy 2020. I'm Scott Michaels from Dearly Departed Tours and FindAdeath.com. I'm placing a video online tonight that uh, has to do with the final destination of Ken Weatherwax, who played Pugsley on The Adams Family in the TV show in the 60s. Ken was Pugsley on TV. After the show was over with, he stayed out of the public eye and, and he worked a lot uh, behind the scenes. And on, uh, on December uh, 14th of 2000, I'm sorry, December 7th, 2014, uh, Ken passed away in a small home in Topanga Canyon at the age of 59 of cardiac arrest. Now, because of the media scrutiny, the public's interest uh, after he passed away, immediately after he passed away, because it's like the most interesting story, what happens to a child star when they die. Uh, the, the, the family sort of took a few steps back and I did reach out to them then about maybe helping with Ken's final arrangements. And uh, they were not interested at that point. But a couple of years later, I reached out again and they were receptive and we were able to Rah Rah Death Hags uh, raised the money to have Ken's grave marked. And on October 31st, 2017, Ken was placed in a permanent spot at Valhalla Cemetery in North Hollywood. The nice people at Valhalla worked with us too. So uh, Ken Weatherwax was interred on Halloween of 2017. And a portion of Ken's cremains are at Dearly Departed Tours Artifact Museum. And uh, you've probably heard that we're closing the museum. Tours are going to continue on, but we're, uh, we're going to be putting the museum away for a while. And uh, it's not gone away permanently. We're just, you know, sort of moving into the, shifting into the next chapter of the museum, a dearly departed tours artifact museum. So it's not goodbye at all. And we're not getting rid of anything, so uh, so it, that's still a to be determined. But Ken, uh, part of his cremains are with us, as well as Michu, the little uh, the little actor, circus performer, as well as a few other people. They'll all be taken care of. They're all coming home with me until we find a permanent spot, so nobody's going to be left in storage somewhere. But anyway, this is the ceremony that we had for Ken Weatherwax on Halloween in 2017. Pugsley Adams, rest in peace. Rock on, Death Hags. Uh, as well as being the actor that we know and love. We are a creepy and a kooky bunch of people. And I think we're a group of pretty decent people as well. Those of you who know us know that we've done this a couple of times for other actors, but it's always been people that we've uh, raised the money for to have marked it that have been gone for a really long time and, and not really acknowledged. And Ken has not been gone for very long and we actually are fortunate enough to be working with his family to, uh, to, uh, to do this very special event. So uh, it's a real honor to be able to do this while people are still around, family members are here to appreciate uh, and to celebrate with us or we are able to celebrate with them more importantly. Now when you see someone on television, a lot of people like Ken, you know, he did the show for, ten, uh, for three years and people assume when they see them on television that they're, uh, that they're set for life. You know, they're rich people. Look at that, he's an icon. He should have all kinds of money. But a lot of people don't realize that Ken worked at a time where there was no such thing as residuals and royalties. So what he got was what he got. He got his daily or his weekly check and, uh, and that was it. So there, were no, there was no extra after that. So it's the equivalent of us, um, our first, second, and third grade in school. That's how important this was in Ken's life. It was three years when he was very, very young. Of course, this lingers a long time because, you know, 50 years later, we're still watching reruns of it. But you, that small amount of time that we had in our lives uh, was the equivalent of what he did as Pugsley. So, but we're, you know, it's a big thing to us. And um, towards the end of his life, you know, Ken, Ken wasn't a man of means. And, uh, and he had gone through some rough patches. So when he died on December 7th of 2014, I reached out to Ken's nephew, Bo, to, uh, to ask if, he, if they were interested in help on, on, on Ken's final arrangements. And I think that the media attention uh, caused his family to be a bit shell-shocked because there was a lot of attention when Ken first died. And rightfully so, you know, uh, Bo was a bit skeptical of our motivations, which, which I completely understand. So I waited a couple of years and I contacted Bo again and this time he said actually I'm glad that uh, you phoned because uh, we were just thinking about doing that because my uncle is here with me and he deserves to be someplace permanent. So we are, um, so we're able to do this with, with Ken's family. 
Uh, I'm very happy to see this come to fruition through the generosity of Ken's fans, family, and friends. And here at Pierce Brothers Valhalla Memorial Park, who have worked so kindly with us and so generously with their time and their resources. Um, this, this, the park, I don't know how well you guys know Valhalla, but the, the park looks fantastic. And it's just getting more, it's, every time I come here, I'm so thrilled to see the progress is happening here. So we're real honored, really honored, because this is almost a brand new mausoleum here. This, this niche is, is probably less than a year old, I think. It's just purpose built, so they were very kind to give us a give kind of a, a front row seat for us all and everyone who wants to come and visit him in the future. So, for five days, we've been enjoying the adventures of the Adams family. Now, we have the honor of saying goodbye to one of its stars and giving them respect and the final resting place that he deserves. The next person I'm going to introduce is Steve Cox. Uh, Steve's been a friend of mine for like 20, over 25 years. We met through the Munchkins and uh, bonded through our, uh, our, our my love of Gilligan's Island, and he wrote books about this stuff. <laughs> but, uh, his book celebrates 60s television and more. The Hooterville, Han Hooterville Handbook and the Beverly Hillbillies book, which also they star uh, Beverly Hillbillies starred Dee Benadere, who is actually buried right over there, the voice of Betty Rubble. And uh, the Munsters, you wrote the Munsters book as well, and, and you are honestly my, my pop culture hero. Uh, the Incredible Don Knotts alone, that should be on your tombstone, <laughs> that's a fantastic book. So while writing his book, The Adams Chronicle, Steve got to know Ken and the rest of the cast of The Adams Family. And, uh, Ken is here, or, I'm sorry, Steve is here to, to share some personal thoughts and stories about Ken. So Steve, if you don't mind, coming sure. on up. Sure, can I, okay right here? Yes. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm not going to talk very long about Ken, and I can't say that Ken and I were great friends or anything, and I, I would definitely say that 20 years ago, Ken probably would not have preferred that I speak at his memorial, because <laughs> it did not start out very well. Um, when I was working on this book on the Adams Family, it was in the early 1990s, and I was living in St. Louis. And I, um, with that book, I had moved out to L.A. And uh, I, I used to stay at a good friend of mine who lives over in uh, Toluca Lake, and he was an older fellow, he was a producer by the name of Paul Henning, and he created the Beverly Hillbillies and uh, Petticoat Junction and produced Green Acres and that type of thing. And he lived on Navajo Street, beautiful street, um, and... I didn't know it at the time. I had no idea that Ken was his neighbor right across the street. Ken and his mom lived there. So when I told him I was working on this book, he said, come on out. And I would stay at his house while I was doing interviews in LA. So I thought, well, this would be a great time. I didn't have Ken's number, you know, so I walked across the street and he wasn't home, but I spoke to his mom through the door. And she, she said, well, I'll, you know, I'll tell Ken, but he just doesn't like really talking about Adam's family, and uh, so I typed up a letter and a request to, to talk with him, and I tried to be as polite as I could, but he wanted nothing to do with me, and um, he really wanted, at that time in his life, I think that I'm not really sure, I'm not really sure why he didn't embrace the Adam's family. I'm sure we all love it. Millions of fans around the country love it, around the world love it. But he wanted nothing to do with the Adams family. And so um, I tried a couple more times at his door, and his mom said, no, he doesn't want to talk to me, not at all. So I wrote the book and used quotes from like an early interview and that type of thing. And the book came out, and I think I sent him a copy, along with the rest of the cast members and, and, and that. And a number of years went by, and I would visit Paul again um, at his house, because I lived here now. So I was over there often, and I would see Ken across the street. There was a couple times, uh, like twice, where I was pulling up in the street, I would park, and I'd see him there getting out of his car. So I went up to him, and I, you know, I started walking to him, and he saw me, and he literally just kind of shooed me away. And he said, I don't want to talk to you. I don't know. And I couldn't figure it out. I didn't understand this because I didn't 
I didn't write anything bad about him or, or about the series, but um, time went by, and a little while later, I would say 10 years later, um, Lisa Loring, who played Wednesday on The Addams Family, she used to do some nostalgia shows, and uh, she said, um, she came over to a, a, a table where I was sitting with some other people at a nostalgia show. This was over here in North Hollywood. And Ken was over there, and I saw him across the room. But I didn't want to go over there, you know. So Lisa came over to a table where I was sitting, and she said, Steve, come on over and, and talk to Ken. I said, no, I, you know, I, I don't want to create a, a scene or a battle, you know. So um, she went back, and she was talking to him for a while, and then she came back over to me, and she said, I talked to Ken, and he understands it now. And she explained to me, he thought I was stalking him. He had no idea, you know, I mean, of course, he didn't have any idea that my friend lived across the street. So I went over there, and I said, Ken, I was never stalking you at all, really, you know. So we actually got to be buddies, you know, and not like we hung around or anything, but I would see him often, and then eventually did some nostalgia shows with him. He was great. He was great. And, and uh, I would see him at different places around Burbank. And that, like, I remember running into him uh, at 7-Eleven once and literally just talking outside. We both had Slurpees. And it was like a hot <laughs> summer day. And we were just talking about whatever, you know, baseball and things like that, you know. And he was a good guy. And I liked him. I, I really liked him. And, uh, um, and, I, and I, I was telling Scott this the other day, one of the proudest moments my career was uh, walking into a studio here in LA with Ken and Lisa and little Felix Sela, who played Cousin It, stands about that tall, and we were invited to record the commentary on the, the DVD box set. So we all just kind of sat together and we watched these episodes, the microphones and the headsets on, and we talked about Adam's family, and Ken was great. He, in fact, I, I didn't think he would be because he's been out of show business and he had worked as a grip for a long time. And um, But he, man, the stories just flowed out of him. And his timing was great. Ken had a good voice, really nice voice. It really didn't kind of match his face or his body. And he didn't look like Pugsley later on either. He had slimmed down, you know. Um, you would not have recognized him later on. But he was a really sweet man, and we got to be buddies. And uh, then I did a couple of appearances, uh, he did, and I, I was uh, out of town, and, and he started doing some nostalgia shows with John Aston and that back east. And I think he started embracing and kind of feeling the love from Adam's Family fans and TV fans in general. And he took it in, you know, and it was nice. He finally embraced it. And I think when he died, I think he finally, you know, really found some peace in his life. And that was nice because Ken did have some hard times at the end there. And, you know, he was not well off in that. Um, and when his mom died, I think he was a little lost, you know. So uh, it was nice. That, that was nice. And I know John Aston told me years ago that he said, I know John said that, uh, he said, I can only surmise that uh, Kenny uh, probably took, uh, you know, took, took the brunt of trouble from you know, kids when he was a kid. Uh, he was a star, and knew him, his friends, in, in grade school and that type of thing. But here he was this kind of heavy set kid that, you know, he really. Even though he had royal show business in his blood, I mean, this guy, you know, Rudd Weatherwax and his aunt was Ruby Thieler and his uncle was Al Jolson. This guy had showbiz in his blood. And so, but he was not necessarily the showbiz type at all. You know, he did his thing as a kid. And John Aston said he was a good little worker when he was a kid. He took direction well. Uh, Lisa said they got along well. They played, they fought like kids do. And they stayed in touch, I know. And uh, Lisa always enjoyed getting together with him later on in years, too. You know, So it was always nice to see them together at a nostalgia show, people taking pictures with them and that. And that was kind of a cool thing, brother and sister from this TV show, you know. 
and I remember seeing Lisa at the funeral, at the at the memorial when he died, and uh, she, you know, she had some tears in her eyes, and I think. She felt a little lost too because you know they were about the same age and he was gone now. And she and John Aston are the only ones left on the show with with the uh, little Felix as well. Um, so, I, so in in closing, I just want to say that I'm glad I got to know uh, Kenny. He was a good guy. He had a good heart, and uh, it didn't start out well, but it ended well. And I think. Maybe it was a little lesson for everybody, you know, with a little understanding. Uh, things go better, you know. Uh, we all get along a little bit better, and I think these days we can use that a little bit more in our lives. So, anyway, uh, uh, Bo, thank you for asking me. Scott, thank you for asking me to be here, and uh, I appreciate it. I just want to say I, I liked Kenny a lot, and he, he was a good guy. So, thank you. So as Steve mentioned, Ken, Ken from, comes from a long line of uh, he's from show business family, and uh, and Bo is Ken's nephew, Bo Vieira. He's the one I, I worked with uh, to to do this today, and um, I'm just glad we pulled it off together. So Bo would like to talk today a little bit about his uh, his uncle. Uh, please come on up. Hi everyone, how's it going? Uh, I just want to thank everybody for coming today. Um, I want to thank Scott for uh, organizing this. Um, the, the, the relationship that I had with my Uncle Ken was not good at first, but then when he came to the Lord, that's when we started getting real close. Um, back in the 80s and the 90s, he was actually very secluded, and he would like to keep to himself. And he really didn't have that many friends, but the friends that he had were very close to him. So uh, I, I got to be impressed with his friends, and uh, they were like a close-knit family. So I am talking about my uncle, the person, and, and not the actor. Um, so it is true that he did hit some tough times after the Adams family. You no, know, he felt like he was typecast, and that's when he got out of the acting part of it, and going into behind the scenes. Um, show business. Uh, what he did was that he was a grip on the A-team in the 80s and it was like really really going strong in, in the TV ratings and some other shows. So he enjoyed that very much and then he got injured one day and he couldn't work anymore as a grip. So I think that started his another downward spiral because he loved working. So he was into drugs at, at the time. He was also into alcohol, and he actually was thinking about committing suicide. So one day he actually went to a church nearby where I live in West Hills. It's called the Chatsworth Community Lake Church. And Jesse was the pastor there. And he had a friend named Bob Wood who is a realtor. Anyway, he went to the church one day and he talked to Bob Wood and he actually had a Bob Wood a suicide note and he was going to kill himself that night with, with a gun. And as it turns out, thank God that Bob turned my uncle into the pastor. So the pastor talked to my uncle about the Lord. So anyway, over time, my uncle got to know the Lord, Jesus Christ, and God, and 
he finally accepted Jesus Christ as his personal Savior. And that's when his new life began, because he was born again. And that's when he started really embracing life, embracing people, going to the autograph shows, and started really making appearances, you know, with Lisa Loring, John Aston, and Felix Sela, who played Cousin It. And that's when his life really turned around. So as it turns out, he loved the Lord so much, he was praying for me and my family, because I wasn't a Christian at that time. So he became really close with the pastor there and the people who went there, and they kept on praying for us. So in the summer of 2009, my uncle Ken said, let's go to Bible study together. So I went to Bible study for my very first time, and I was so lost when I was reading the Bible. It's like, I don't know what this means, I don't get it, blah, blah, blah. And then after, over time actually, over time, I started reading the Bible, got to know the Lord even more. And then on Easter Day, on, on Easter Day 2010, that's when I accepted Jesus Christ into my, as my personal Savior. So I have been a Christian now for seven and a half years, and I thank God for my uncle leading me to the Lord. My uncle was also a big animal lover. Every, there wasn't a time where he wasn't playing with his dog. If a dog passes away, he, he always gets another dog. And some of his dog's names were Buddy, Red, and some other dog's names I, I actually forgot. He's got so many. So he was a big animal lover. You know, he also loved to go fishing up in the lakes, up in the mountains, and he was also, and, and then he also loved the ocean. So anyway, I'm, I do thank God for my uncle. I'm, I'm glad that my uncle had a positive impact on everyone worldwide. I'm so happy that the TV shows are still airing on, the, on TV. And, and it's just absolutely wonderful. Um, I became good friends with Lisa Loring, Felix Sela. Um, I had never met John Aston. Um, I did talk to, or actually I am friends with Jackie Coogan's nephew, Keith Coogan, who is also a actor. I just saw him at, a, at the Autograph China show uh, last weekend. So it was funny that I saw him there and I told him about this about this event. Um, I did talk to Lisa Lauren yesterday, and the reason that she's not here today is because she has a doctor's appointment. But if it wasn't for the for the appointment, she would have been here. Um, I talked to Butch Patrick, who was also at the private memorial service, and he's back east promoting or, or actually doing um, appearances because he was because he played on the Munsters. And it's funny though because the fans of the Munsters and the Allen's family they would get my uncle and Bush Patrick confused. <laughs> so they would say, Hey, who are you again? <laughs> so yeah, that was pretty funny. But anyway, um, I'm very happy that my uncle continues to have an impact on people's lives around the world through TV. Um, no, I'm glad that I am good friends with Felix Sela and Lisa Loring. Um, and uh, and uh, I think that's all I have to say. But um, um, I didn't have a private memorial service, a private one actually, for. Uh, the family and friends, and and it was held at our church, and it was overflowing actually, and so many people spoke in glowing terms of my uncle, you know, and it was just unbelievable. It was it was very nice to hear those words about my uncle. 
He was very loved. Um, people loved him very, very much. Um, I know that he could have been a sourpuss at times, but, you know, aren't we all at one time or, or another? <laughs> so anyway, um, I just want to thank you again for showing up. You know, it means a lot to me. Um, I'm sure that my uncle would have appreciated this. So I just want to say uh, thanks again to, to Scott Michael, um, Scott Michael for organizing this. You're welcome. Thanks, Bob. Well, thank you. So it's down to all of us, really, be it maybe a, a donation or, or just love and thoughts to, to have this become a success and to have uh, Ken be uh, inerned properly here at Valhalla. So uh, the gentlemen from Valhalla now are going to come and put uh, Ken in his niche. And if you guys would like to come up for that. And uh, and, uh, and also I wanted to thank the nice people who, who brought flowers. And I know Mary Simpson... A Hollywood Mary sent flowers too, very appropriately black flowers, which and they're alive and they're real. But uh, but if you guys, they're going to put Ken in in his niche now. So if you'd like to step up, if you're interested, and come on up close, uh, that'd be really nice.
So, one last thing before everyone uh, goes on their way. Uh, I don't think that uh, saying a farewell to Ken would be appropriate without uh, the theme. So, so give me a moment, and I have this thing should be ready to roll. And then... <laughs> Better get those fingers snapping. <laughs> Thank you everyone for coming today. If you'd like to join us for lunch, we're going to head over to a place called the Coral Cafe. It's on Bur Burbank Boulevard, 3321 Burbank Boulevard. If you'd like to join us, they have a little private room set aside for us. It's a non-host lunch. Please come. Uh, make sure, if you didn't, to get a, one of the memorial pamphlets and also a button commemorating today. And again, thank you guys so much for coming and uh, for the celebration. And Bo, especially, thank you for allowing us to do this. Oh, yeah, what's up? All right. And thank you, Bob. The nice people at Valhalla really made this work. Thank you, Bob. Thank you.